This is the Simpit video blog, and today I'm here to do something that's maybe borderline editorial versus video blog, and I'm here to talk about IndyCar, which might frighten some of you thinking that, where's Sean going with this? What happened to sim racing? Anyway, I will bring this full circle back to sim racing, but I am sitting here on a Monday coming off of one of the greatest races and one of the greatest championship battles I've seen in many years in IndyCar. It's actually two seasons in a row that IndyCar has really had incredible seasons that were fun to watch, great racing, great competition. Anyway, I don't know, if you're a racing fan in North America, chances are you saw the same race I'm going about, about to talk to. And if you're elsewhere in the world, you probably have heard about it because everyone's talking about it today. But yesterday was the IndyCar Series season finale at Sonoma, and Juan Pablo Montoya had a pretty good lead going into the race, but you had Dixon, Ray Hall, and Power all within striking distance going into the race. So you had a four-man battle for the championship going into the last race, which that alone is pretty significant. There are not a lot of racing series in the world that have four different drivers all within striking distance. Usually, in most forms of racing, you end up with one or two teams that have a performance edge, and by this point in the season, it's sort of a foredone, foregone conclusion. But in this case, you had four drivers really, really going to battle it out. So I'm not going to dwell on the race too much. I'll, I mean, a little, there are a few things that really that played out. In case you haven't found out, and I hope I'm not ruining anybody's news report here. But in the end, Dixon went on to basically dominate the entire race. And he did everything that he had to to put it in position for him to potentially win the championship. He led the most laps. He won the race, and he led a lap, got every bonus point that he could possibly get, and that put Montoya in quite a position where he actually had to finish fifth in order to win the championship or you'd be down to a tiebreaker. At moments, Ray Hall, well, Ray Hall actually struggled all race, but Power, who is actually Montoya's teammate, who's also in the championship hunt. Well, let's talk about a few moments that, in the end, again, Scott Dixon went on to, went on to win the entire championship, so what really affected it for Montoya? Number one, you've got the Penske approach to racing. And this is something, and, and if I'm wrong here, if there was a different quote before the race, somebody please correct me in the comments of this video. But Penske, Roger Penske has always been the kind of leader that told his drivers to go race hard, do their thing. And he's not been known for team orders. And yesterday, his two best drivers were fighting for the championship. And from the video, from watching the race, you can tell there were no team orders because at one moment, Power and Montoya got into each other. Power spun out. Montoya took on maybe some damage to his front wing. Anyway, that was a big moment. And this dropped Montoya all the way back. He did go in and pit, get a new front wing, and it put him completely off sequence. And I'm getting long-winded here, but the reason I'm bringing that up is I've seen many drivers see how their car does. They came in, and I believe that was a very conservative, protecting the championship kind of decision, figuring, we don't know, let's just come in, get a wing, we'll go off rotation. It didn't look that hurt, though. Later in the race, I saw Bourdais running with a wing that was dragging on the ground, and he was getting around okay. In fact, he was holding Montoya off. So that's one thing that you really have to really wonder about. But that wasn't it. If, if that wasn't enough, what we saw play out during the rest of the race was every Penske driver throwing everything they had at Montoya. And it was, it was spectacular to see on TV. It was great racing, it was intense, and it was fierce. And it actually reminded me, watching Montoya out there, I, I felt like, I felt so bad for him. I felt like he was all alone. I thought about the Tour de France and why I'm a huge fan of cycling and why I'm a big fan of the Tour de France. When you're the leader, the grand champion in the Tour de France, Every team throws everything they have at you, and you were on your own. It is on you to win that championship. It is on you to win that title. And yesterday, it was on Montoya. He had to do everything he had, and everybody in that race threw everything they had at him to make it a challenge. And honestly, he did everything he could. He ended up finishing sixth. It put them in a tie between him and Dixon, and the tiebreaker went to Dixon because he had three wins versus Montoya's two. Um, other big moment, I kind of got ahead and let the cat out of the bag or the results. Another thing that really struck me in the race and why Montoya probably didn't win the championship was Tony Kanaan. He made an incredible pass at one point late in the race on Montoya. 
And that was a critical position, number one, because later on, Montoya was actually stronger than Briscoe and Kanan and charging fast after them. So my hat's off to Tony Kanan because he probably played a pretty big role in the whole thing. Anyway, I, I, the reason I'm saying all this, I'll bring it back to sim racing right now. Number one, congratulations to IndyCar because it was a great season. Incredible season to watch. I had so much fun watching every race and it really played out over the whole season. The other thing, congratulations to Scott Dixon and Ganassi Racing who... I will say the reason I'm probably a little talking about this is I was not rooting for Ganassi Racing. So just a little something you know about me now. Uh, no offense to Ganassi, but I was pulling for Penske here. So anyway, I want to congratulate Dixon on a championship. He is one of the best drivers in the series. Well done. So back to sim racing. Um, unfortunately, this is the end of the IndyCar season. I mean, we're not even in September yet, and the season is over. And that strikes me kind of weird, and that's something that I hope IndyCar does something about in the future. I'd like to see a longer season out of a premier racing series like that here in the U.S. The other thing is, it really is the end of that joy that I get as a sim racer of being able to watch or drive all week on a track and then watch them do it. I've been running at Sonoma all week. I had my big race on Saturday. Sunday, I'm watching them doing it. And I get to see the huge similarities between the car, because I was running an Indy car, and the track. There were a couple of differences in the track, things I racing. I mean, there was a little change to that IRL version at the top, and they definitely looked like they were going further into the final corner. And that would be something to make the I racing version of the track more fun. Anyway, that's not my point here, but I do just want to say that it, it kind of, the end of the season kind of brings that cool down for a lot of us sim racers. So that is sort of a disappointment for me. Uh, it means next week I'll be running at my track, Las Vegas, and the Indy guys will not. So the other thing I do want to mention or talk about here, and I'm always talking about it with the sim pit, and that is the mental aspects of racing. And, and do you do everything you can at all times to get everything out of yourself, out of your car, out of your performance on track? And in this case, I'm talking about over the course of an entire season. I have one race left. And when I look at the points, I might see that I'm just a couple points behind or in front of a few people on the, on the leaderboard or maybe fighting for a championship. And at this moment in time, I look to Juan Montoya and I think, what races during the season could have made yesterday not a factor? And that is what's really something to really point out and focus on. And I'm not pointing a finger at him. I'm looking to you and I'm looking at me. When I look at myself and my points battle and I think, at what race earlier in the season, 11 races earlier, could I have done something better, performed better, maybe didn't get a DNF or miss a race or anything that might cause a drop in points? What could I have done so that the importance of this final race isn't so important? I mean, what a terrible way to not win the championship. I'm not gonna say he lost the champ. What a terrible way to not win the championship. So my point here is make every race count. Don't just wait till the end of the season. Congratulations, Scott Dixon. Congratulations, IndyCar. This is the Simpit video blog, and I'll see you on the track.